Hey, hello, Helen, and welcome back to another exciting Stand the Energy Man show on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters, clean energy is king, and hydrogen is a gas. Today's show is all about catching you up on the latest and greatest in hydrogen news from around the world. And a good part of today's news comes to us courtesy of the California Fuel Cell Partnership and Mr. Keith Malone over there, who does all their public outreach. And the first story Keith sent me was uh, out of North Africa, where obviously solar and wind resources are very sufficient and could provide um, the continents, uh, all the continents need by themselves. Apparently there's a robust natural gas pipeline also between Africa and Europe. And rather than using all that solar power to send electricity through a wire, they're exploring the possibility of turning the solar power into hydrogen and introducing it into the natural gas pipelines to go and put that energy through their pipelines to get to Europe. This would certainly make for a much cleaner grid and uh, a much easier project than trying to force that energy through a wire. But before I move to the second story, this first story brings up an important point. I've gotten a question or two recently from YouTube viewers and one asked about embrittlement. Is it, it is a serious problem with hydrogen. So let me just give you a short explanation of embrittlement. Most existing natural gas pipelines have been in use for many, many decades and are made of some kind of iron or steel. Unfortunately, under high pressure or high temperature or both, hydrogen tends to cause iron alloys like steel and even some cases of stainless steel that's not high grade to become brittle and crack. And that's not good when you're, the atom you're dealing with is the tiniest one on the planet. So most gas pipelines hesitate to put more than about 15% of their hydrogen into natural gas pipelines. So embrittlement can be a problem in aging infrastructure. However, the new fiber reinforced tubing that's available can actually be pressurized up to 2,500 PSI, which is the same as a scuba tank, by the way, and has no problems handling the hydrogen or causing any embrittlement at all. The high quality stainless steel pipe is also reliable for handling hydrogen but few existing pipelines are made exclusively of high-grade stainless steel. So retrofitting gas lines to carry high amounts of hyd hydrogen is unlikely in the near term. But just remember, in places where there are no telephones, those societies never strung landlines across their territory. They went straight to cell phones and skipped the line, live line technology. This could be the solution for Africa. Just go to fiber reinforced pipelines. So the next story that came to us from California is out of Europe. And the hydrogen industry in Europe has realized that the Chinese have become leaders in low cost manufacturing of a lot of things, including alkaline electrolyzer technology. And the Europeans in response to China are planning on establishing a clean hydrogen coalition to maintain their current dominance in this growing field, particularly against China. As public utilities struggle to deal with the growing amount of intermittent renewable power, the use of electrolyzers to make use of curtailed power and to be a load on their grid and turn it into storable energy is gaining popularity. The use of existing natural gas pipelines and even constructing dedicated hydrogen pipelines along the same easements is seen as a solution for many utilities as trying to balance the increased amount of intermittent renewable power from solar and wind in their systems. Compared to batteries alone, hydrogen takes up much less space and costs about 25% of an equivalent battery storage capacity. I think I'll probably do a separate show just on that subject alone. From the Pacific area, both Australia and Japan have aggressively stepped out and adopted clean hydrogen as a major component across their energy sectors. In 2017, Japan introduced hydrogen, a hydrogen strategy, and the result is that it's growing into the most advanced hydrogen economy in the world today, overall. They're developing a high number of hydrogen fueling stations, highest number of hydrogen fueling stations in the world, probably with California being second. And their aim is to reach one gigawatt of power capacity on their grid with hydrogen. Based on hydrogen, by, and, and they're looking at 2030 for a timeline. They plan to showcase hydrogen technology also in the upcoming Olympic Games, which will be, I'll be looking forward to. Last year in 2019, Australia announced that they are migrating to a hydrogen economy, and they took aggressive steps to produce clean hydrogen, and which means off of an electrolyzer, and convert it to ammonia. 
And guess what? They're shipping the ammonia to Japan to help them meet their demands because the demand for hydrogen is growing so rapidly. So between China, South Korea, Japan, and Australia, the Pacific and Asian community lead the way in hydrogen technology in both transportation and grid applications. And Stan the Energy Man would personally throw Hawaii into that same Pacific mix of leadership in hydrogen technology because we're actually stepping out, especially with the military. Closer to home, but still a long ways from Hawaii, California has introduced SB 1122 at the California Public Utilities Commission, formally recognizing that hydrogen made with electrolysis is free from carbon. And when you make it from solar, wind, or hydroelectric power, you're carbon free from beginning to end. So electrolysis should be one of the premier ways of moving forward in California to meet their zero carbon goals. A little farther east, I'm not sure what MTD is because it wasn't explained, but it's a, a mass transit in Illinois, will be the first in the nation to commercially order 60 zero emission hydrogen fuel cell buses for their routes um, using the Excelsior Charge H2 bus uh, in a battery electric uh, component. It uses compressed hydrogen as a range extender uh, for the and an energy source with Ballard fuel cells powering the system. Their fuel cell technology is built in the new Flyer Excelsior platform alongside their existing battery electric technology, thus extending the range and reducing the weight of their buses. 60 buses is a lot of buses, by the way. And last I heard, it was about a two-year waiting list to get uh, bus, uh, hydrogen fuel cell buses made. An exciting bit of business and economic news is that the industry experts report that shipments of hydrogen fuel cells grew by more than 40% in 2019. Think about that. Worldwide, the whole market grew by 40%. That's huge. And the proponents of the technology are working to establish it alongside lithium batteries as a way to remove pollution from the transportation sector and to provide long-term energy storage in the grid. Over in Europe, the French supplier of automotive components, and I'm not sure how you pronounce their name, so I should probably skip it, but it's um, Sefauridicia, I don't know, something like that, is pushing ahead with the development of a fuel cell technology that can be adapted to existing vehicles as well as cars and trucks of the future. They report that their fuel cell technology is still a little expensive, but the price of fuel cell stacks is dropping steadily and an, an indication that the technology is growing more flexible as the development continues. They also report that fuel cells have a potential to increase battery electric vehicle range and make options to recharge more plentiful. They're quicker to recharge than batteries, that's for sure. Back in California, there's a clean vehicle initiative that would ban the sale, lease, or transfer of or any potential use of vehicles valued at over $50,000 pre-tax, while exempting full electric fuel cell vehicles and any vehicles primarily used for commercial purposes, government vehicles, and some specialty vehicles may also be excluded from the law. It would also only apply to vehicles manufactured after 2021. San Diego already has one of the higher EV adoption rates in, in the country, according to the city council there. And they're focused on really creating a clean transportation sector, and they're pushing that bill. A company called KRRI is recognized as one of the biggest proponents of leading edge technology for the railway operations and they have developed a fuel cell train that they plan to put uh, through three or four years of extensive testing in South Korea. Their objective is to thoroughly validate the potential for a hydrogen propulsion system in South Korea's national rail system. Over in Europe, ammonia is, has become part of Norway's hydrogen strategy. The Norwegian oil and energy minister says that ammonia will be the best, uh, be set on equal footing as an energy source in the country's new strategies to develop hydrogen. This is important, as I mentioned earlier, because Australia supplies Japan with hydrogen, oftentimes shipped in the form of ammonia, which is NH3, one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Because it's high in hydrogen energy, energy density, but it's also well established as a liquid commodity in the agricultural sector with long-standing safety protocols 
And one of the most efficient ways to ship bulk hydrogen rather than as a gas or as liquid hydrogen in a frozen commodity. One of my favorite companies in the world, a company called Plug Power, announced recently that they've developed a partnership with Colorado-based Lightning Systems, a global developer of zero emission drivetrains. And this collaboration enables both companies to offer the world's first electric fuel cell powered class six trucks, which are trucks that are uh, 12 and a, up to 12 and a half tons. So that's like, uh, I would say the second biggest trucks you usually see on the road. The class seven and eight trucks are your really, really big trucks. But they'll be capable of supporting the middle delivery logistics between warehouses and distribution centers. So plug power is already a big player in the material handling equipment and hydrogen. And the lightning systems will deliver both standard and long range uh, classic trucks through their partnership, taking full advantage of the value that fuel cells offer in commercial fleets for high utilization, long range, fast fueling, and maximization of cargo volume and payload, which are really important. Plug Power's ProGen engines provide 90 kilowatts of fuel cell electric power and utilize the latest generation of the company's proprietary MDA and metal plate stack technology which delivers industry-leading power density. The standard vehicle offerings include an impressive 20 kilograms of onboard hydrogen storage, delivering an, deliver, delivering an average range of 200 miles and an extended range option that goes to 400 miles, doubling the range. Back in Europe, uh, two Air Liquide initiatives will be underway shortly. Um, they awarded contracts to develop uh, uh, fleets of taxis and medium haul trucks, predominantly in France. Uh, this is so new, I don't have a lot of the company's names, but the companies involved in the French government plan to use these, these projects to validate the maturity and reliability of innovative logistics transportation solutions using hydrogen technology. The model will reduce emissions by more than 2,000 metric tons of CO2 a year, the equivalent of the annual emissions of more than 700 sedans. And by the way, most of those vehicles will be Toyota Mirais, and they'll be used as taxi cabs. The story that made, made it to the top of my wish list this uh, Sunday is South Korea auto manufacturers that are already producing two production hydrogen fuel cell cars has announced that they'll be launching production of a hydrogen fuel cell pickup truck in 2023. Under the agreement with Hyundai Motors, they'll develop two hydrogen powered trucks for logistics purposes by 2023 and 10 more trucks of the, fo the following year. Um, GPA will provide support. I'm not sure who GPA is. They'll provide support to building the recharging stations uh, on site. So the company will also offer um, 2000 square meters of land to build the stations on. And they're sp scheduled to be built by 2022. A hydrogen fuel cell truck will be capable of driving about 320 kilometers. Well, we're gonna take a quick break here and we'll be back in 60 seconds with more Stan Energy Man news from around the world. Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Stan the Energy Man here on ThinkTech Hawaii. So the folks uh, 
that beats Dan Energy Man to trademarking the name First Element Fuels. They're really, they really upset me because that's a really good name, but they got it first and I was going to steal it. They're getting ready to build a large capacity hydrogen fueling station in California, or a bunch of them. The company reports that scaling to a large capacity helps drive down the cost greatly. And the company says they'll be making sure that they're opening more and more of the large capacity stations and all of their stations going forward will have four refueling positions, meaning four cars can refuel uh, their hydrogen at the same time. The station should be able to uh, price their hydrogen around $10 a kilogram with stations that are heavily utilized. And this translates into, in practical terms, they're, they're basically getting hydrogen sold on par with the cost of today's gasoline prices, which is a real milestone for the hydrogen uh, industry. Uh, another story from Germany, the research minister for Germany reports that they're building a partnership with West African countries to import clean hydrogen. Many Europeans see Africa as a continent of opportunity and see green and clean hydrogen made from electrolysis as the oil of tomorrow. Germany's research minister is excited that Germany has laid down the cornerstone for hydrogen partnership with West Africa. The minister predicts that hydrogen will be a great replacement for oil or gas in the transportation and industrial use and cannot be generated sufficiently within the, the territorial limits of Germany. So the nations of um, Africa with a hopeful process, the abundant wind and solar that they have, uh, it's a perfect partnership between Germany and West Africa for clean hydrogen. Hyundai Motors Corporation is also demonstrating the also demonstrated their clean air power of its uh, fuel cell car, the Nexio, by collecting the gases in a transparent balloon from their vehicle alongside an internal combustion engine vehicle. It soon became apparent that the trapped air being produced by their Nexo is scrubbed on board, being purified through three separate air purification systems was a clear solution to cleaning any cities or states air pollution problems. Cummins Diesel, a diesel engine company that they're pretty big, has recently purchased Hydrogenics out of Canada. They're a fuel cell manufacturing company and they announced that their first full electric bus manufacturer in partnership uh, with Gilly, another big bus manufacturer, went into service in Santa Monica, California late last year. Cummins also showed a fuel cell powered truck at the North American Commercial Vehicle Show, and the company is seeing significant interest in fuel cell technology on both on and off highway markets. Cummins recognizes that including hydrogen infrastructure and hydrogen production technology as part of an acquisition process will position Cummins well in the markets to support customers because they, they uh, realize that the lack of access to hydrogen is a significant pacing factor in adopting fuel cell technology. That's why we call the, the, the cycle, is, we call it as the chicken and the egg debacle. Without the stations, you can't get cars. Without the cars, no one wants to build stations. So Cummins is gonna do uh, what Nikola Motors is doing and bring both. And finally, I think the biggest hydrogen news is really the smallest of scale. A company called Widex Energy Cell has designed and built and is going to market a rechargeable hearing aid operated using a fuel cell. This fuel cell runs on methanol for the fuel, which is uh, high in hydrogen. Just think of the potential. If cell phones and computers could operate off of um, the same hydrogen uh, rather than uh, the unsustainable lithium cobalt batteries that they have that tend to catch fire when you don't want them to, and if you can make it small enough to go into a hearing aid, Wow, you should have no trouble developing fuel cells for today's computer industry. And this is far, as I'm concerned, is the biggest little news of today. It's just awesome. So just think, you could make fuel cells that could run your cell phone. And when you wanted to recharge them, instead of plugging in into something at the airport, like yesterday I was at the airport, there were people plugging their cell phones into every outlet they could find. Fuel cells, you just you could carry a little spare thing to squirt hydrogen in your, in your phone and you're back up and running in, in seconds. So I, I do get some questions from time to time from viewers, especially on YouTube. And one of them was a, a guy who said, Stan, I, yeah, hydrogen's great, but I'm still sold on batteries. Well, you know, a lot of things that we look at today are marketed really well, including batteries. And 
I have to I have to tell you that as a hydrogen guy, I have to like batteries too because I always have batteries mixed with hydrogen. The batteries perform a really important role in smoothing and reacting quickly to power change requirements. So anytime you're using hydrogen fuel cells in your in your system, you're also probably pairing it up with a well-matched battery for whatever you're going to be doing, whether it's a, re, a residential house or an industrial application or a vehicle. And, you know, the balance there is important. That's why it takes a really good designer or a good electrical engineer to help you design that system properly. But I'm here to tell you not all batteries are created equal. And I spent last weekend uh, on the Big Island and spent some more time with uh, Paul Pontio at Blue Planet Research. And, uh, and I can tell you that you know, every time I see the lithium iron phosphate batteries, I just wonder why we're bothering with lithium cobalt at this point in time. If the lithium iron phosphate is a little bit more expensive, a little bit heavier, so it's a little bit more limited in the transportation use, but it's so much more stable and so much safer um, and so much more reliable and has such a longer cycle life than the other technologies and gives you great performance. So for those of you that um, think that Elon Musk and his wall and his Tesla are, are the cat's meow, you really ought to try and look at the Sony technology, which I think has uh, been bought out by a company called Murata in Japan, which is lithium iron phosphate. I think there's uh, probably some other companies that are pushing the same kind of technology and you should check them out. But uh, Google something called the nail test and, and watch a lithium iron ph phosphate uh, cell compete against a lithium cobalt cell and it will scare the bejeebies out of you when you see the cobalt technology burst into flames almost explode when the other battery when it gets punctured by a nail just kind of fizzles and gurgles and then nothing happens so not all batteries are created equal i, I did a whole show on that and i really think if you're going to be a battery fan you really probably ought to be a little bit more specific so one of the, the stats I always keep in my head that, that ought to impress any battery person is, yeah, you can get energy into energy out pretty well with a lithium battery. But when it comes to storing energy, and I, I especially relate this to transportation since I'm a former aviator, um, weight matters. And there is no element on earth that gives you the energy density that hydrogen does. That's why they use it to launch rockets to outer space as liquid hydrogen, because you just can't get any more energy density. So for example, the typical lead acid battery in your car will give you 55 amp hours for every kilogram of battery that you have. The typical lithium battery will give you in the neighborhood of four to 600 amp hours per kilogram. Um, a hazardous material that we use in the Air Force, of course, called hydrazine. We use it in F-16s for their backup power generation it gives you about 2,200 amp hours per kilogram of weight. Hydrogen fuel cells give you 26,000 amp hours per kilogram of weight. So you just cannot get better energy density out of anything, battery or, or anything else, than hydrogen. And when you put it on a big scale, like uh, when we start to have grids that have gigawatt scale energy storage requirements, you won't be using batteries because you can't dig up enough cobalt and enough lithium to put that many batteries in all the cars and all the grids, you're gonna end up using hydrogen because whether it's in ammonia, whether it's in liquid hydrogen or whether it's just pressurized gas, hydrogen gives more energy density than any other storage medium that you can think of. And oh, by the way, yes, it is safe. And I've done several shows on hydrogen safety. And let's just say that when you don't have any oxygen mixed with the hydrogen, it just plain isn't flammable. I would, most of the people that deal with gases in, in the industrial world or in laboratories will say they are much more comfortable working with hydrogen gas than with pure oxygen gas. And that's a fact. A little tidbit from my aviation background, if you ever go up to an airplane and you see where their oxygen system vents to the outside to stabilize its pressure, you'll see a red circle painted around it and it says, do not touch. And the reason for that is if you have oxygen coming out of that vent and you have any oil on your gloves, it will spontaneously combust. Just oil mixing with pure oxygen will spontaneously ignite. And that's why on airplanes, you just don't see uh, people handling oxygen kind of frivolously. 
It's, it's pretty dangerous. So hydrogen, uh, from everyone I've talked to and, and all my own experience, much, much, much safer than most of the fuels we use today, including gasoline and propane. Uh, probably diesel gives hydrogen a good run for the money because diesel, that's why they use it in boats in particular. Um, it's much safer to use than gasoline uh, in terms of safety. But hydrogen beats them all. So anyway, that's going to do it for this uh, week's Stanton Energy Man. Thanks for joining us here on ThinkTech Hawaii. And we'll join you next week here from beautiful downtown Honolulu.